948. Let's just double check that. And 2948. Yes, indeed. It is correct. Okay, so more time passes, we're imagining. And sales are happening over here on the Shopify store. And they're ticking down the sales numbers in terms of units as they happen. But we're not worried about recording a decrease to the inventory on our financials yet because we're only going to do that periodically at the end of the month. However, we are concerned with the units of the sales as they tick down and we're going to make purchases, you know, as we need to, to try to meet uh, the demand. So we're going to say, okay, we think based on what the store is saying here that based on the units, we need to buy some more units. So I'm going to go, okay, we're going to, let's see which units we need to buy on 515. And this is going to be product number one again. Let's say on 515, we buy two more units. And this time they cost $27. Notice the cost per unit is rising. And I'm just, it might not rise this rapidly, but typically the cost will rise as time passes because of inflation and whatnot. And that's why you need the flow assumptions. So if I copy, let's just copy this down. And there we have it. So now we, pur we purchased two times 27 each. It's going to cost us $54. Ending inventory was at 138 plus the 54 is now at the 192 for product number one and then product number two we also purchased this time uh let's say we purchased three units of uh product number two so let's say i'm just gonna put it here product two and we're gonna purchase uh three units so the total units are up to five now for product number two and then uh, and hold on a second. I don't want it here. That happened on 515. So let's put it here. Product two. And then here's my two. Okay. And then, so everything's carrying down four units total now. And then nothing's here. And then I'm going to copy this down. And it's doing nothing because, because this is a purchase and not a sales item. And then the, the total cost actually this needs to be what am i doing here this needs to be then what we purchased them for we we purchased them for 111 so the cost went up we had to pay 105 per unit now we're paying 111 per unit okay and then the, there's the total two units times 111 gets us 222 ending balance is the 210 plus the 222 gives us the 432 ending balance for product number two and then product number three, did we buy any product number three on, uh, th we did. We're going to say product three, we also purchased. And we're going to purchase three of those. And they cost us now 675 to purchase those ones. So they went up again, inflation happening, hit us again. I'm going to copy this one down. And then total cost is three units times 675 prior balance plus the current change gives us this number and then our totals which are the ending balances there's where we stand each of the ending balance for product one two and three and here's the change that happened in other words this is the purchase price so we're purchasing 2301 of inventory which we're breaking out on a per unit basis for products one two and three so that's what we have thus far so i'm going to just pay i'm going to imagine we buy it all from vendor one we might have multiple vendors that we buy different types of products from uh, but i'm going to imagine we buy them all from vendor one here so i'm going to say all right we bought all this stuff to to uh put in our store and so we're going to see it decrease the checking account again vendor number one and vendor number one is we're making vendor number one rich and we're going to say this is going to be for the amount. Uh, but we're getting rich too. So that's cool. I'm cool with that. Uh, 2301. 2301. 2301. And so this is going to decrease checking. The other side is going into inventory. So we'll save and close it. And balance sheet it. And run it. Checking account going down. Other side. Assets now up to 5249. And that ties out here to our ending balance in our worksheet. 5249, MUI B to the end, BN, as they say. All right, then. 
So then let's say that at the end of the year, then, uh, or at the end of the month now, we are going to, we're going to do our, our physical count again. So what's been happening is we've been selling our stuff on our third party store here and their inventory tracking has been going up and down on a perpetual system. And we're just recording the purchase side, but not the sales side in our financial statement on a dollar amount using the weighted average method. And now we're gonna say it's the end of the month. So we're gonna do a periodic adjustment to make our financial statements correct periodically. We're gonna look at the physical count as well as which could also be reflected or shown here on the Shopify as we manage our physical count of inventory and the difference between the physical count and what's in our books at this point in time in terms of units, we imagine we sold those, right? So that's the periodic system. So we're gonna say, okay, then let's go back on over and, and, and say this happens on 531. We're gonna adjust our books with a journal entry, product number one, and we're gonna imagine that we only have four units left. We've counted our inventory. We looked at the physical count and the Shopify count in units. We got four units left. I have eight units here. That means we decreased the units by four. We sold four units to get the unit count down to four. And then we're not gonna have any buying thing because we didn't purchase anything. So I'll keep that at zero or I might just put a zero into the field. And then I'm gonna copy this down. Now look what it's doing because we have our fancy formula. It's, it's now saying, hey, look, this because that's zero or less than zero, I'm going to do this number, which is our which is our ending balance right before this this transaction divided by the number of units. So we've been buying stuff. It cost us $20, 22, 23 and so on up to $27. The average at this point in time is the ending inventory for product number one divided by the number of units before we selling them at this point, which is about $24, right? And then we've got our total ending balance, which is gonna be, uh, now it's this uh, 20, so it's C9, C9 times uh, E9, but there's nothing in E9, so it's C9 times F9. So it's these two are what's being calculated here, the second half of that formula. And then the ending balance is the 192 minus, because it's a negative number, gets us to the 96 remaining. Okay, we also, did we sell any, we didn't even sell any of product number two, which is a bust, no one wants it. No one wants product. Product two, no one wants you. <laughs> See how that rhymed? Product two, no one wants you. Oh, burned, burned product two. Okay, so we got product number three and we're gonna imagine that uh, we have two units left. So we checked out our physical count and what's on our Shopify physical count, two units left. So we have to say seven minus two, that means we sold five units. So five units brings us down to two. Seven minus five gives us the two. Nothing here. I'm gonna copy this formula down, which is gonna do this, gonna say that was zero. So I, what I want you to do then is to take the uh, four, six, two, five, the total value of the inventory divided by how many units we had before this transaction and that gives us an average cost of the 660 remember they cost us 650 and then 675 but the weighted average 660 at this time so then we're going to say that means that this times that 